in this lab, we're going to decompose copper 2 carbonate that's called basic copper 2 carbonate. Because we're going to be collecting data and using masses to calculate percent yield, we have to use the correct formula for basic copper 2 carbonate, which is copper 2 carbonate hydroxide. So when we mass out our copper 2 carbonate, it includes copper 2 carbonate and copper 2 hydroxide. And so the molar mass is 221.11 grams per mole. Before we can start the lab, we also want to think about what kind of balanced equation are we going to have for the decomposition reaction. If copper 2 carbonate was pure, we could just write this reaction where you have copper 2 carbonate decomposing as a solid into copper 2 oxide and carbon dioxide. The problem is because we're going to be collecting mass data and calculating a percent yield, we need to have the correct formula, which would be copper 2 carbonate hydroxide, sometimes written here like that, and it's going to produce two moles of copper 2 oxide solid, one mole of carbon dioxide gas, and one mole of water from the original one mole that we started with. All right, the first step to starting this lab is to grab your test tube. It should be clean and dry and turn on your electronic balance. Let it go to zero and make sure that it says grams. And mine's gonna take a little bit of time. You have to place this on here gently so it doesn't roll off. Otherwise you'll have to come up with a different system. Mine doesn't seem to roll off, so here we go. So I'm gonna place that gently onto the balance and make sure it's not gonna roll off. There we go and then record that original mass. In this case, it looks like 43.45 in your data table. All right, step number two is grab your copper two carbonate, very carefully open it, try not to spill any, and your test tube and a scupula, and add in kind of what your teacher directs in mind. These test tubes are a little bit large, so I'm gonna put um, probably like about three scoops full in there. As long as we have the original mass, and we don't have too much in there to heat, we'll be fine. So I'm just gonna go with that. That looks pretty good for the experiment. That should be plenty. And then again, carefully place this on the balance again. Use the same exact electronic balance also. Gonna get it steady and record that original mass, 46.60 grams in your data table. The next step is to take your copper to carbonate and kind of shake it down a little bit so that we don't have all piled in one area, kind of have a nice little angle to it. Then put it into your test tube clamp. Try to clamp it closer to the top like this. Tighten here nicely so that you know that it's in there securely. You can also adjust back here or the height um, at that point. And then we're gonna be heating the Bunsen burner gently underneath this area in the next step. So on to the decomposition reaction. I have a two blue cone flame ready to go. And I have my test tube at an angle away from others. And I want to start heating it gently. So when you start heating it, you know, have the flame a little bit lower. The other thing from now on, I'm just going to refer to the greenish blue reactant as copper 2 carbonate, just to make it simple. But remember, it really is copper 2 carbonate hydroxide. First thing you want to do is start looking for signs of a chemical change. If you read the pre lab, there is a color change that shows that copper 2 oxide is forming. The other thing we want to start looking for is evidence of the other products, one being carbon dioxide, and then because it does start out as a hydroxide, we want to look for evidence of water. So I'm going to kind of zoom in and show you what it looks like at this point. So you are seeing some evidence of the bluish green solid turning into a black solid that looks a lot like water condensing on the out or sorry, the inside of the test tube, maybe the outside of two here. And to test for carbon dioxide, we have to do something different. So I'm gonna increase the heat and I'm gonna do two tests for carbon dioxide being present. One is I'm gonna take a wood splint and light it. And if the wood splint is extinguished or looks to be extinguished, that means that carbon dioxide is probably leaving the test tube as a product and that definitely looks like that is happening as I put this near the inside of the test tube, okay? The second test that you can do is taking some universal indicator, it starts out green. Keep universal indicator away from a flame because the liquid is flammable. So I just soaked a little bit on the end of a Q-tip and it's green. Place the Q-tip inside, but don't touch anything except for the, you know, just the open area. And if you see a color change like this, 
and you take an indicator uh, chart, you get to see that this turned out to be acidic. That's a sign that carbon dioxide is present because carbon dioxide reacts with water, which is part of the universal indicator, and creates carbonic acid, which is a whole separate chemical change that we're gonna write. So I have kind of two ways that I've proven carbon dioxide is definitely present. I'm also, again, seeing a lot of water condensing on the inside of that flask. I mean test tube, I don't mean flask. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep heating the copper to carbonate hydroxide. I'm also gonna try to um, boil off or heat the test tube and get all the water to exit the test tube also so that when I take my final mass, I should only hopefully have the reacted copper to um, oxide left. So I'm gonna keep heating this and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So here is the finished product. I have my copper to carbonate looks to be completely decomposed into copper to oxide. Um, I've also taken my Bunsen burner and I've t used that to drive off all the water that looked like it was in the upper portion of the test tube. So that looks like it's gone. And so the last thing I have to do is kind of safely turn off my Bunsen burner and clean up. So I'm gonna turn off the Bunsen burner. Usually you turn it off from the bottom and lower it at least, if maybe not all the way off. And then make sure that you put the gas jet back to perpendicular, remove that whole setup. I like to have my students pretzel it like that and then let this sit for about three to five minutes before we weigh it, and then we'll have to clean up. So I thought I'd like to see what would happen with a wood splint, just placing it into a test tube where I'm not even heating anything, it should just be air. Um, Cause I was curious how, how accurate was that test? And if you place this wood splint inside of this test tube with just air in it, it looks like it still continually burns when it's in there. So I feel like that's a not the best test for carbon dioxide, I like the universal indicator, but I feel like it still shows us that carbon dioxide was probably coming out of our test tube as proof. So using that same electronic balance, have it on zero, gently place your very cooled test tube, make sure that's not warm at all, um, cause that will give you an error reading on the mass. So then gently again, place it on there and make sure it doesn't roll off. And you should see that the mass has gone down um, because we've driven off um, one of the products, which was carbon dioxide. So record that it's 45.73 in your data table, and then we'll subtract that from the test tube's mass, and then that should be the mass of just our copper to oxide. And then we can move on to doing the stoichiometry and the percent yield. And we'll see how well I did in my lab. <laughs>